Değerli konuklarımız İstanbul Finans Zirvesi'ne verdiğimiz kısa aranın ardından devam ediyoruz. Bloomberg ET Ekonomi Koordinatörü Sayın Özlem Dalga Moderatörlüğü'nde gerçekleşecek oturumun adı sermaye piyasaları ve yenilikçilik. Özlem Dalga'nın konuğu ise Nasdaq OMX Grup Başkan Yardımcısı Sayın Sandy Meyer Fuşer. Uh, Sandy, welcome to Istanbul. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here again. Uh, so I, you know, everybody wants to know how the partnership with Nasdaq and Borsa Istanbul is going. What's the latest on uh, the partnership? Well, there's nothing new. It just continues to be steady and uh, and positive. Uh, the Borsa Istanbul, uh, or the creation of the Borsa Istanbul, was an incredibly difficult uh, challenge. It's a major project. It has never been done before. Mm -hmm. uh, the integration of all markets into a central market. It's the aspiration of any market who wants to, uh, to be the principal player, and it was done here in Turkey. And um, integrations have their difficulties. Uh, it's a management issue. Mm -hmm. But I think this is moving along very well at a very, very pretty good clip. So what is different uh, about the integration of Borsa Istanbul? You told me that it's one of a kind. Could you elaborate a bit more on that? Well, let me, um, you know, uh, it has always been the aspiration of every large market, or every market, really, to be more than a single modality. I mean, in the United States, for example, we had two very big markets. You had the New York Stock Exchange and you had NASDAQ. But when you really looked at it in detail, what you saw was that you had two boutiques. They were big boutiques, but they only dealt with one product, and that product was equities. As the world got more complicated, as technology became more complicated, what you began to see was that uh, nobody or no professional trader would just trade equities. In order to cover their bets, they would start to create options mm -hmm. so that they had what's called a hedge. And as all of these algorithmic trading and the sophistication of the technology and the traders, they would link it to other products. So now you have hedges that include, uh, you can buy an equity and you can hedge it with an option and then you can hedge that with a futures product, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and these hedges become more and more complicated, more and more global. So that the, the, connect, the, the, um, the markets themselves um, became supermarkets or department stores as opposed to being a single boutique. Um, New York and NASDAQ, had they stayed as single boutiques, they wouldn't be here. Um, New York bet differently than we did. They went and tried to copy themselves, so they bought Uranex. Um, and uh, Uranex, fortunately for them, had life, but at the end of the day, they couldn't maintain it, and so now they're part of the ICE. NASDAQ took a different journey. NASDAQ bought um, and developed a relationship with OMX, which was the, mm -hmm. North, you know, the Scandinavian markets. Uh, but more to the point, they were the largest producer and, uh, of market technology around the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a consequence of the relationship that we have with them by, by purchasing them, uh, and through growth, we now are the largest provider of market technology around the world. So markets have to diversify. You can't be static. It's like any other business. Um, you know, take the company that you work for. Um, it's a fully integrated technology. If it was just newspapers, newspapers are going to be online soon. You mm -hmm. know, how long are you going to have a newspaper in which you physically hold a piece of paper? I mean, I never believe that I personally would do away with my morning New York Times. Um, but I get up earlier than the newspaper gets delivered. And by the time it gets delivered now, I've read most of the stories that I'm interested in online. So the world has just gotten a lot more complicated. Borsa Istanbul is a creation, I think, of some very far-sighted and very good public mm -hmm. policy. Uh, two, three years ago, the government, together with uh, the Borsa, uh, and Dr. Tahin, who was uh -huh. at the uh, Central Bank, and he was moved over to the uh, Borsa, uh, basically integrated um, uh, all of the markets, which in Turkey were uh, diversified, 
both in terms of what they did. They were mm -hmm. all boutiques, and they were geographically dispersed. And so what you had was the beginning of a process of integrating the markets. In order to do that, you have to integrate the technology and have a common technology mm -hmm. uh, and a common clearing. And the Bursa Istanbul uh, is doing that. I haven't seen anybody else in the world do that. Uh, we looked at it and we thought, wow, this is really an extraordinary opportunity. So Borsa to be part Istanbul of it. is the first department store. It's the first department store market that was created through a decision, a public policy decision. Mm -hmm. And uh, it gets even more interesting than that. It wasn't just a public policy decision to make it an extension of the government. In fact, the public policy decision that was made was to take the ownership of the government and put the government into a minority position, recognizing that you must have a very strong private sector and a culture of a private sector in order to have a successful government center. Uh -huh. So part of the bill that set it up also created a process by which Borsa Istanbul would demutualize and then do an IPO. Uh -huh. So it had a lot of components to it that made it quite exciting for us to want to be part of. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was my question actually. W what made it uh, so interesting for you, uh, for NASDAQ to be part of this uh, project? It's, it's first of its uh, kind. First of its kind <laughs> in the world. As I say, you know, it isn't, um, you know, you said so, Bursa Istanbul is the first department store. No, it's not. Uh -huh. Others have become department stores, but it's taken them decades and decades to get there. I would say that NASDAQ is a department store because uh, if you ask me who we are or what we are today, I would say we're not a stock market. We are a diversified technology company that focuses on the financial services uh, industry. But technology is more our business than markets, even though we're the largest market in the world in terms of volume. So um, we, you know, have evolved, and if you, if in today's world, with the way technology is evolving, you don't keep up, or better yet, get ahead of that process, you won't exist. The New York Stock Exchange effectively doesn't exist. It is a small component, one or two percent, of the bottom line of the ICE. Mm -hmm. So staying ahead of the curve, being a, an innovator, Mm -hmm. is very, very important. And what happened here was extraordinarily innovative, extraordinarily far-sighted. Uh, and it goes into the next step, I guess we're going to talk about it, the conference will talk about it later on, is the, world, is the financial center, yeah. uh, which comes with it. So it's a whole plan. So uh, the innovation aspect also brought <coughs> Nasdaq uh, closer to Borsa Istanbul. The theme, the main theme of our uh, panel is finance and innovation, and we'll uh, elaborate a bit more on how finance and innovation is uh, going. Uh, what are the latest trends uh, in terms of finance and innovation? You said Borsa Istanbul is a good example. Yes, I think Borsa Istanbul is a, is a terribly good example. Um, I mean, innovation is a, you can always talk about technological innovation in, in financial markets, uh, and people have mixed views of them. For example, um, the ability to do transactions in nanoseconds. Mm -hmm. You know, you can have God knows how many trades executed by the time it takes to blink our eyes. Um, and so you have innovation by creating centers where people's technology all is as close to the machine as possible, so you can have high-frequency trading. Mm -hmm. Some people like high-frequency trading. Some people think it adds um, it adds liquidity into the marketplace. Other people think it doesn't. So th a lot of the stuff is controversial, just like everything is controversial. Mm -hmm. But you are seeing a lot of technological innovation. The innovation, um, the positive innovations, I think, um, and again, Turkey is a leader in it, is um, when they unified the markets, they strengthened the regulatory process. Um, and the, um, the rules under which the markets are operated here 
are the top of the line, the best type of regulation, most transparent, uh, balanced, fair, and protective of the consumer that uh, you have in the world. So um, um, now, in order to achieve that, NASDAQ as a company has what we call Smarts Technology, a company that we bought in Australia, mm -hmm. that provides uh, oversight of the regulatory process so that the regulators, as well as companies, as well as exchanges, have the tools to monitor markets that are now operating at the speed of light. Mm -hmm. so, so, so as a result of the partnership, Bors uh, Istanbul will have the latest technology transfer from NASDAQ. Right. And uh, NASDAQ owns 5% of Bors Istanbul and has 2% uh, option. Uh, in, you have an option to buy more shares, right? We do. Uh -huh. well, will you exercise that option? You know, that, that, that really is a question that we'll look at as you get closer uh, you know, to the IPO. Mm -hmm. There are positives, there are negatives. The fact of the matter is that um, one of the things that was important for Borsa Istanbul was a condition, really, of any partnership for a technology provider was to have a stake in the company. They wanted to make sure that um, we weren't just extractors mm -hmm. of capital, that we were willing to put capital uh, at risk to ensure for the success. So it wasn't just for NASDAQ, it was anybody who was going to be a potential uh, advisor. But we're a small investor. Mm -hmm. um, the bigger investors are going to come in in two different ways. The first way they're going to come in is through a private placement, and the Borsa is busy talking to um, the, some of the largest um, capital investment firms, from, literally from around the world, all of whom have shown enormous interest in coming in to be a partner of the Borsa Istanbul. Uh, and the second will be through a public IPO, uh, which is scheduled to happen sometime in 2015. Now, those 2015 are... 2015 is the uh, during, year. Yeah, the year. That, or that, it's 2015 or 2016, you know, they're trying to shoot for 2015. Now, that, now why is that important? Uh, if you bring global investors into the business, a lot of these people have the ability not just to provide capital, but to also provide capital to the market. Mm -hmm. In other words, most of these firms uh, are not one-dimensional. They're not just investors, they're also traders. And they have the ability to drive order flow. Uh, they have the ability to dispatch market makers mm -hmm. who have liquidity, who can increase the, in, uh, the uh, capital that is in the marketplace itself. So there are a lot of steps. Uh, you, know, you can call it an onion. You, know, mm -hmm. you can peel each layer. And what has put, been put together here is a very interesting onion that will get to the core of the business. And uh, as I say, it, what also comes with it uh, is the aspiration to become a regional hub. Yeah, well, th that's the ultimate aspiration. But uh, the road it gets uh, tough sometimes. I mean, lately we've seen a lot of technical problems at Warsaw Istanbul. Do you think these problems are OK? Uh, or uh, is do, do we wor need to worry about this? I mean, are the investors and our viewers uh, message us, email us, and they ask us, what's happening here at Borsa Istanbul? Well, um, what I, if, if someone sent me that email and said, what's happening at yeah. Borsa Istanbul, I would say that the Borsa Istanbul took on an extraordinarily difficult challenge, which was to integrate a variety of different markets and the central clearing operation under one roof that you're going to always have a certain amount of, you know, uh, I was going to use a, uh, a professional term, screw-ups. Mm. Um, but those things happen. Hey, look, you know, um, we've had our own technological <laughs> issues from time to time. Every stock exchange, every company has its own technological glitches. I, if I looked at, if you wanted to measure the, um, the stability even of the existing systems of the Bourse Istanbul, I would say that it's uh, first rate and it would be in the top tier of markets from around the country in terms of its stability. When you add the layer, the, compl the, the, the complexity of integrating all those other exchanges mm -hmm. into the system and doing it all simultaneously, I would just call these um, glitches, and, I, and they're minor glitches. Now, that doesn't mean that a trader who's in the middle of a trade 
and finds that, whoops, my trade didn't go through, yeah. or it's taking me longer than I usually do to get a confirm, mm -hmm. so I don't know what my next move is going to be, what my next step is going to be, that person as an individual is going to feel upset. Yeah. That's understandable. But in the context of the whole, it's, it's a nothing. Okay, so these technological hiccups are normal, you're saying, because the ultimate goal is so grand, so big. Let's continue with the ultimate goal then. How can uh, Borsa Istanbul be, attract uh, more market makers to the region uh, as Istanbul aspires to be a, a market hub in the region? Well, I think what they have to do is continue doing what they're doing, which is they're continuing to offer a larger and larger um, uh, smorgasbord of things for people to trade, I think. So you have to provide product. Mm -hmm. You have to increase the liquidity because it takes two sides. Uh, you have to educate people that, uh, about your market. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to educate people here in Turkey you have a very low participation rate of people who are engaged in the markets directly. Yeah, right. Um, and so uh, that's not a negative, that's called an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Because as people get more and more sophisticated about the management of their money, they understand what stock exchanges are about. They're not mm -hmm. casinos, they're, a, they're an instrument. Uh, capital markets are there to help in capital formation. Mm -hmm. They're there uh, to help uh, in uh, allowing people to allocate their risk in a lot of different ways. Um, so I think that the way things are evolving here, and the reason we wanted to get involved badly, we very much wanted to get involved, was because we see um, the enormous opportunities that, that are here. Now, all of that could not and will not happen I mean, the success of it all, mm -hmm. will not happen unless there is, you know, um, an, you know, a successful implementation of the plan. If it doesn't, mm -hmm. you know, if the glitches, you know, you know become, uh, you know, dark holes, then mm -hmm. uh, that becomes problematic. I don't think that's the case as long as there is continuity and commitment and talent and resources that are put to make this plan work, mm -hmm. I think well, what are it the will risks? work. What can go wrong? I mean, what are the weak points? Oh, I, don't, I don't know what the weak points per se are. I can, I can tell you, you know, what I think the challenges are. You have to keep the economy going, and Turkey has to be perceived as a place where people from around the world, and certainly in the region, want to come. Mm -hmm. uh, that means that you're going to have to have a continuous, you know, you have to have a growth rate doesn't always have to reach the highs, but it has to be steady and it has to be continuous. Um, in order to have that, you have to have political stability. Uh, in order to have that, you have to have uh, continuous you know, investment from abroad. Um, you have to be um, able to manage um, you know, the flows. I think the mm -hmm. Borsa is doing that in terms of the Borsa's piece. So you have all of these various components that have, to, that have to come together. Now, those are the things that happen internally. Now, you know, there is the other part of it, what you don't control. Mm -hmm. Now, you Yeah, know, black swans. That's right. Um, or black hooded men yeah. um, who, you know, clearly as you look around the region, the, yeah, the, we, the we live in region. a difficult region. That's right. It's a tough Doesn't neighborhood. Get you live more in a difficult. You live in a tough neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, but historically or traditionally, you've been the ballast wheel. Yeah. Uh, Turkey has been the place that, through it all, it has its own ups and downs, mm -hmm. like everybody else. But within it all, there has been a, a, a sense of continuity and stability, yeah. and I think that that's very important. And if it maintains that, I think um, within all of this. Uh, it'll only get stronger rather than weaker. Mm -hmm. So if uh, Turkey continues to be the good neighborhood in a difficult region, is this enough to attract international companies to list in Borsa Istanbul? What needs to be done? You know, um, I think you're jumping about, you know, um, a decade or two ahead of yourself. Oh. <laughs> because, the, the, you know, I'm not being facetious. I don't think, it's not a question of, 
international companies coming to list here. Uh, it's a question of unleashing the potential that is within Turkey and within the region for companies here to list here. Uh, you have a relatively small percentage of companies in this region who are good companies, mm -hmm. who have tremendous opportunities and tremendous futures, who have chosen not to become publicly listed companies, mm -hmm. who have chosen to remain as family owned or private institutions. So, you know, you don't need um, to have, you know, an Apple or a Google or whatever list here. What you need is to unlock the, the extraordinary depth of your own marketplace. Mm -hmm. And if you have, you know, all of the good companies or a lot of the good companies that are within Turkey listing on the exchange and engaging in the exchange, the rest will come. How about the companies in the uh, Eurasia region? I mean, if we can get the big companies, good companies uh, to be listed in uh, Turkey, the, the Turkish companies, then is that, uh, will that give uh, good enough of a reason for those in the Eurasia market in Kazakhstan or, you know, well, to list here? Uh, well, uh, you know, uh, you're now at another, an an uh, you're now at another level you know, uh -huh. of the onion. We're now, uh -huh. you're peeling into another, another layer of uh -huh. the onion. That is another reason why um, NASDAQ wanted to be linked with Borsa Istanbul. Mm -hmm. We don't have either the capacity or the human resources, mm -hmm. or frankly, the understanding of how to do business in a lot of this neighborhood. Mm -hmm. uh, and so part of the partnership we have is to work with the Borsa Istanbul is to extend ourselves into those regions where they would provide the ground mm -hmm. troops, if you will. So it's a, it, it's a, that's another very, very important component. It, listen, I think that the great, you know, when someone says, why is Borsa Istanbul a high probability of success? Mm -hmm. uh, on whatever basis you want to look at it in terms of, um, you know, the elements of success. You know, when I said you jumped a couple of, uh, you know, decades ahead. It's not really about, you know, getting global companies to list here. It's getting companies here and in the region. Now, this region is a challenge. I mean, I'm not talking about going mm -hmm. north. Uh, if you go into, you know, the Middle East, as an example, um, you have a lot of good functioning exchanges. Mm -hmm. Um, we provide technology to, I, I'd say, a majority of them. Now, the issues there are twofold. Number one, most of them are boutiques. Mm -hmm. So they basically trade equities and they don't have a wide, you know, a range of products you do. Mm -hmm. uh, the other region is a cultural one. And it's a different kind of cultural one than you have. Um, here, I think people need more education about the virtues of public markets and the virtues of um, broadening the, the, the capital base and the ownership base. Mm -hmm. In a lot of places in the Middle East, um, you have a massive resistance to the transparency that comes with the listing of companies. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a lot of family-owned businesses who want to keep it, as they say, within the family. And they, they, the, the, and in some of those places, transparency is not what you're looking for. So you don't go on to a publicly traded market. Okay, so you want to make sure governance issue is there. Uh, what needs to be done uh, in order uh, to uh, keep the international investors safe in the governance issue? Well, the governance issues, uh, you have to have a market that is perceived universally, globally, as a, an honest market, a mm -hmm. place where where the best practices <clears throat> that are associated with the running of markets are, are take place is the best, as from my vantage point, from what I can see, you have a very strong independent regulator uh, who is sophisticated and technologically au courant, mm -hmm. who will do a very, very good job of ensuring the integrity of the marketplace. That's very, very important, and I think uh, you have it. And the, and the, uh, the regulator is independent, has to remain independent. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think you need to have um, world-class technology. Um, the Borsa, in its negotiations with us and with other potential vendors, 
uh, went for the high end rather than the low end because mm -hmm. they see it uh, at the, something that has to be able to grow and you can't have constant disruptions. Oops, our technology is obsolete. Mm -hmm. You have to have a technology that is scalable. Um, you have to have a population, a, a, you know, a, a base, a large enough um, market mm -hmm. of, for the market. So um, here you have, um, you know, uh, you know, you have banks, insurance companies, mm -hmm. pension funds, etc. But you have a continuously growing um, sector of re retail investors. Um, one of the things that has struck me the most about what's happening here and in my dealings with the Borsa that I've seen them do is honestly to focus and to spend a whole lot of money mm -hmm. on educating the public as to what a market is. I mean, there are some places in the, in, in the world who, where people look at markets as a direct relative of a gambling casino. Huh. Uh, that's not a good thing. You know, uh, it's about long-term growth. There are mm -hmm. players who are traders, but for the individual private public, uh, the individual person, the retail investor, it's about long-term mm -hmm. growth. It's about long-term stability. It's about those kinds of issues. And what's happening here, and I think the education aspect of what the Borsa Istanbul is doing, is absolutely critical to the long-term mm -hmm. stability. So the first challenge is to attract the local investors, you're saying, and educating them. Well, no, I said the first challenge is to get people, the companies uh, and the institutions, most of, a lot of whom are, in, are private, mm -hmm. a lot of whom have not gone into public markets, to look seriously at and to then cross mm -hmm. the line and become public institutions. Uh, the second is to be able to provide a place where smart entrepreneurs who have good ideas will think about coming to this marketplace because there will be capital in this marketplace mm -hmm. and use that as a place to do what capital markets are first and foremost about, mm -hmm. to be a capital market, to be the place where you get initial capital or capital to build and grow your business. Mm -hmm. That's very, very important. People forget that that is the primary purpose of a market. Mm -hmm. So uh, do you think tax incentives can work on this journey? Um, yes, um, strategic tax invest, uh, strategic tax incentives can work. Um, they have to be targeted, mm -hmm. they have to be intelligent, and they have to be fair. Um, so for- Can you give a few examples? I, I, yes, I can give a few examples. Um, and I'll use the United States. Mm -hmm. um, in the United States, you have a different tax rate for long-term, for investing at you know, long-term capital, uh, and that gives you a much lower tax rate than other kinds of income, mm -hmm. other kinds of earned income. Uh, you have a different and lower tax rate for dividends. That is designed to get investors to come in and stay with companies because they are not just in the appreciation of the value, but in the year-to-year mm -hmm. -year success of the company, they will get a piece of the pie. So, yeah, there are ways of incentivizing. There are ways of de-incentivizing. There are countries around the world, and some in Europe, mm -hmm. who are imposing transaction taxes, which in my view, now, you know, and someone can fairly say, well, you have a biased view. Maybe. I, I try not to, mm -hmm. to but I, you know, I think transaction taxes adds a burden to the public, to a a marketplace that you want to operate as freely as you possibly can. You can have income taxes, but transaction taxes that affect the market I don't think are the most efficient way to do it. Um, you can provide, there, you know, in, taxes that are incentives that produce things that wouldn't happen without that incentive are good. Mm -hmm. Taxes that take care of special interests just because they're a powerful special interest are bad. So, you know, um, when I was involved in building the World Trade Center in New York, um, we gave tax abatements to companies that would not come 
under normal circumstances mm -hmm. and build at Battery Park City, which I was president of. Um, those incentives proved to be very, very effective to get people to invest in a, in a neighborhood, an area that they would, no, they would not have normally come to. Mm -hmm. But we gave them a reason to do it. But after a period of time, once they were there, once the neighborhood was made, we got rid of those tax incentives. Mm -hmm. So tax incentives for local investors and international investors, if implemented correctly, would work. You're saying we'll give that message to Minister uh, Shimshek tomorrow. Well, he will sure. be here attending the summit tomorrow. But they have to be fair. Yeah. All taxes have to be, in, in the long run, they have to be fair. They have to be targeted. You have to know why you're doing mm -hmm. it and why it's going to help the general public. And they have to be fair. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they don't have to be equal, but they have to be fair. So how about uh, co corporate bonds? How can we encourage uh, international corporations to uh, issue their bonds here? Uh, we, we see that Turkish companies are uh, more interested uh, lately on corporate bonds. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, the way you do it is by having a, an economy that people want to um, invest in. If there is sufficient liquidity, mm -hmm. uh, people will come to where the liquidity is. It's um, like a moth the flame, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, uh, it really is, if you offer somebody something that will help them, will also help you, mm -hmm. then you do it. Um, but I think by becoming a, a clearly defined world financial center, people will look at the opportunities that are offered. I'll, I'll, I'll give you, it, it's very hard, usually people go to their own markets, you know? And uh, as I say, one of the inhibitors for people coming from abroad to come to Turkey mm -hmm. is that they want to see the Turkish market develop within Turkey. So if the locals are supportive of it, they also mm -hmm. think it's a good place to go, they will, they will come too. Um, you know, if you have good markets, there are a lot of the Italian Lux companies. Um, who looked at Asia as their growth market. And when they chose to uh, do their IPOs, they went to Hong Kong, believing that that would help them you know, in China and in broad of Asia. So there are a lot of reasons uh, that, that motivate people. I mean, the US market has been both a, um, uh, a place where most of our companies choose to do their IPOs. Uh, and where some, a lot of foreign companies come in because we have a lot of liquidity uh, in the United States. But, you know, there are competing centers all over the world now. I mean, uh, England, you know, London is a competing center for IPOs. Uh, Germany to a lesser but nonetheless significant extent. Mm -hmm. We do a bunch of them uh, of IPOs on a pretty regular basis in the Nordics. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, Certainly Hong Kong is a, a major uh, market mm -hmm. that attracts people from other places to a lesser degree, but nonetheless it still does it, Singapore. Um, uh, and you know, you're looking at places like Brazil um, that are becoming centers. So uh, it's gonna be a competitive business. Yeah. Well, as the competition gets tough, tougher, I mean, Istanbul is four hours away from London, four hours from, away from Dubai. We're right in the middle. Uh, what can make us more competitive in this competition to be a financial center, a market hub? You say that the ingredients are there, but to make a good soup or a good uh, meal, uh, something is missing in the picture. Tell us what's missing in the picture. Well, I think you're moving in the right direction of, of providing all the ingredients mm -hmm. um, to make a good meal. Um, I, you know, uh, if you want to bring physical market makers, people who will work out of here, uh, the truth of the matter is then uh, world financial centers have certain criteria that people look at that make it successful. Um, one of which is the environment in which people live. You don't just want to impo import capital you're also importing people. Mm -hmm. um, and if you look at the trading hubs in the world, um, if you meet a trader who works for an international bank, right, that person probably in his or her career 
has you know worked in New York and Chicago. Uh -huh. uh, they've worked in London. They've worked in Frankfurt. They've worked in Tokyo and Shanghai, uh, Singapore, etc. Uh -huh. uh, so you, but if you notice something about all those cities, um, you know you spent a few years in Chicago. You said the city itself has to be attractive. The environment has to be attractive. It has to be a place where, you know, after you spent a very stressful day you know, um, trading, you want to be able to go out and have a good time, you want to have, you know, a nice place to live, uh, you want to have, you know, a sense that um, the place is a good place to be for yourself and for your families, etc., mm -hmm. etc. So those are very, very important. So you do know, you think criteria. Istanbul has those? Uh, uh, those let, me, let me say, I can just speak for myself. Uh -huh. um, I put Istanbul at it, when people say to me, um, you know, you go all over the world, um, you know, other than New York, mm -hmm. which is where I live, where, you know, what city or cities excite you the most? And I'm not saying this just because I'm here and just because I'm going to be here three times in the next six weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, it's because I, Istanbul is magical. It's just a magical place. It's an extraordinary place. Uh, it's, you know, putting aside the propaganda lines of where, the line of where the East meets the West, mm -hmm. it is where the East meets the West. And, you know, you, you know, I love driving through the city when the car is moving. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> when the car is moving. <laughs> um, and just looking at, you know, the skyline of mm -hmm. the city, you know, the combination of the the uh, the old and the new and the mm -hmm. extraordinary architecture and history and um, the uh, you know we we talked about we analogized restaurants the food mm -hmm. here uh, and the varieties are extraordinary well yeah. Istanbul is so ever it's, popular I mean. well Istanbul is ever popular and that's why it should be a popular place mm -hmm. to attract to attract uh, market makers and to attract liquidity I think the exchange and the government mm -hmm. are doing the right things. Uh, they started it two or three years ago. The integration is important, bringing it into you know, uh, the state of the art from a technological point of view is important. You, know, you were making a correct analogy, uh, or it wasn't an analogy, you, as a statement of fact, you're four hours from London and mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But those things are very, very important and the ability to bring people here who want to live here and or spend time living here, etc. But trading is done in nanoseconds. And those nanoseconds are from you know anywhere in the world. You know, you, mm -hmm. you just you know you can enter stuff on a computer. So you have to be able to live or trap be mm -hmm. be effective in both those spheres. So and I think you're getting there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how will uh, Nasdaq uh, help in that sense in terms of technology and innovation uh, to Borsa Istanbul? Well, first of all, on the technology side, that's what we're here for mm -hmm. as a primary. Um, in addition to that, you know, we have what we call a strategic partnership. Mm -hmm. We meet, we meet four times a year and discuss the various strategies. Part of that strategy is to sell Istanbul as a world financial center. We're, we're at this point the uh, sole, if not the sole, but we're certainly the largest global marketplace. When we invested, it wasn't the extent of the investment, it was the fact of the investment. Uh, we're making a very, very important statement. We consider, um, we consider Borsa Istanbul to be uh, not just an up and coming market, but to become a major regional hub, global mm -hmm. hub, and we are willing to stake our reputation behind it. So that was what the investment uh, mm -hmm. said, and what, that's what the investment was about. Part of it is to help find and help encourage um, other investors to come into, uh, mm -hmm. come into the market. And that's very, very important. In a lot of places, no matter where it is, there always, there always are local people who say, you know, why are you bringing in people from the outside? You know, why don't you just keep all the goodies home? Mm -hmm. Well, the answer is that um, in order to build 
to get more goodies, to build the pie, to mm -hmm. make it bigger and bigger. You need to have, you know, capital investment. You, all your questions were related to the issue of how do you get people to list here? How do you get people to do their corporate bonds here? How do you get people to bring capital or liquidity here? Which connotes the need, regardless of who, what your market is, it could be New York or Istanbul or London or Hong Kong, within it all, it always has to be a dynamic mix of people from around the world. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, what I find so wonderful and intriguing about Istanbul in particular, I don't know the rest of Turkey as well, so mm -hmm. I don't want to go to places I haven't been. Mm -hmm. But what's wonderful about Istanbul is that it retains its character and it also, uh, it also is open and inviting mm -hmm. to others to come in without Istanbul losing its character. Mm -hmm. um, and that's um, a wonderful thing. And I think, and the more and more it gets known. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the turmoil in the region uh, does, does not help in this sense. I mean, it, we live in a very difficult region. Uh, do you think it can scare away international investors, the turmoil in the region? I mean, for instance, when you were coming here, did people ask, oh, you're going to, you know, Turkey? Uh, well, uh, there are two questions. The first part of it is, can it adversely affect it? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, it could adversely affect it for Turkey, but it can adversely affect it for New York or America. I mean, the fact of the matter is, and the proof of that is very simple. Um, when I wake up in the morning, uh, I used to run downstairs and grab the newspaper. Now I just mm. turn on my uh, tablet and see what's happening in the world. You watch the markets and how they are affected by what happens going from east to west and around the globe. So what happens anywhere in the world or is going to affect markets because of the connectivity mm -hmm. or the, the, the absolute linking together of markets and economies. There's just no set. Yeah. Uh, and in this region in particular, I think people, are, people in around the world uh, are very scared. You have, you have terrorist groups who are using traditional um, advertising or techniques, social media techniques, uh, to do just that, to affect uh, or infect it, the people's thinking with fear. Mm -hmm. And yes, it does have an effect. Um, you, know, you know, will that kind of thing work? I don't believe so in the long run, but it, it, it, it does, it does have an effect. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's no escaping it. Uh, we just have to figure out how to put an end to it. Mm -hmm. um, now, the other piece is, you know, I'm not going to lie to you. My wife, three times, I've been coming to Turkey regularly for the last three, four years. And, you know, as I was heading off to the airport, she said, are you sure you're going to be safe? Mm -hmm. um, I said, the traffic in Istanbul moves slow enough that we don't have to worry about a car accident. <laughs> Um, That's a good one. <laughs> but um, the, the truth of the matter is, um, you know, if I were traveling to any place in the region, people would ask the same question. Mm -hmm. You know, you're in the news business. Wow. You know what's happening every day. You know, so, so uh, I mean, uh, we, you know, in terms of projects and know-how, uh, we touched a little bit on how NASDAQ will contribute. Is there anything we left out? I mean, technology is the uh, big thing uh, in terms of know-how, and uh, NASDAQ is committed. No, no, no, no, I, I, I, I don't want to play word games with uh -huh. you, but no, technology is a necessity. Know-how is different. Mm -hmm. You have to know how to use the technology. Uh, and one of the most important elements of the partnership with Borsa Istanbul is that Borsa Istanbul, in its very, very, very beginning stages of negotiating with a technology provider, and we were not the only ones, we won at the end, but we were not the only ones, insisted that 
as opposed to the traditional way where the technology provider would keep the know-how. Mm. They, they insisted on what you call a, um, uh, a knowledge transfer mm -hmm. or, uh, so that while we are implementing the system, we are simultaneously training locals to run the systems and mm -hmm. to be essentially in charge of the whole dynamic of the system. So there is a, a major intellectual and knowledge transfer that's going on that's very, very much part of it. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that was something they insisted on from the very, very beginning. So you need the technology, you need the people to run it. Of course, Istanbul is going to run it themselves, essentially. Mm -hmm. So uh, are you learning anything from this uh, experience? Maybe, I mean, it's a win-win it's a example, win-win scenario, as far as I've understood from our uh, interview here. Uh, maybe uh, people here in Turkey will teach something to uh, you guys at NASDAQ. Well, you know, as, as I was saying, the thing that I enjoy the most uh, is that there are a lot of common things, mm -hmm. but the things that we're learning a lot from, uh, from being here and working with the people here is an appreciation of different cultures. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, in, in a global world, that's very, very important. It's very important to be able um, to do business all over the world if you understand the strengths of people's uh, cultures. I, for example, have learned to love pomegranates. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, okay. and kebabs. Kebabs, mm -hmm. okay. The tourism issue is there. It's a nice city to live here. I mean, Istanbul is nice to come back to, I, I guess. And hopefully the turmoil in the region will decrease, so more investors will enjoy coming back here. Or as we say in New York, inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. Uh, is there anything we missed out, Sandy? I mean, we, we talked, uh, you know, we did the whole tour around the big uh, grand uh, goal of uh, making Istanbul a financial center and the partnership with Nasdaq and Borsa Istanbul. Is there anything we missed out? No, the two things, uh, you know, a, a timetable, uh, 15, latest 16 for an IPO. Uh, I think uh, in, in 2015, um, the Borsa Istanbul, I think, is going to be the, um, uh, the location where the World Federation of Exchanges are going to have its annual meeting. I think that's going to be a very, very important meeting so that all the exchanges in the world are going to get a chance to see what's happening here mm -hmm. uh, in Istanbul. Um, uh, and I think um, that um, if you ask me, I think the, the, the Borsa Istanbul is going to be recognized certainly in the, from the middle to the end of this decade as, mm -hmm. as being one of the principal exchanges in the world, probably the most important one from Central Europe to Central Asia. Okay, I think I ran out of questions, so let's open it up uh, to the audience. Maybe they have some questions in mind. Sorunuz varsa alabiliriz eğer istiyorsanız. Benim sorularım bitti. Buyurun. Yes. product that is hedged by by a future then hedged by by by by a swap then so that increases that does not increase transparency so it's harder and harder to understand those products in that sense i would like to know from you your view on systemic risks because we don't quite understand a lot of the products and how they're, they're put together and also in terms of high frequency trading, computer generated trading, where do you see the pitfalls? This, there's upsides, but where do you see the pitfalls and the systemic risks? Well, the pitfalls, well, systemic risks by definition, using the term, are systemic. So I think the, the, the biggest pitfall for systemic risk is that institutions that are um, what we call in the United States SIFMOs that are part of the strategic infrastructure of the country. They have to be adequately capitalized 
Um, so, for example, when uh, somebody woke up at the Treasury Department a couple of years ago in the U.S., they said, wait a second, clearing, central clearing, the Depository Trust uh, and the Options Clearing Corporation, which I'm on the board of, um, you guys don't seem to have adequate reserves to cover, you know, a big dip in terms of your operating revenues, et cetera, et cetera. So all of a sudden where, you know, the clearing firms, which were, they're not unregulated, but they weren't heavily regulated. Now they have the regulators really looking at those institutions and making sure that, um, uh, that adequate capital reserves are met. And I think so um, in terms of systemic risk, uh, I think that banking regulators and market regulators are now starting to look at the integrity of and the sustainability of institutions that have to have the kind of oversight. Uh, in markets themselves, I think um, part of the evolution of technology is to be able to measure pre-market or pre-trading risk so that, you know, when people trade, um, that uh, they really have skin in the game and enough skin to make sure that they can stay there. So I think that, yeah, uh, you have that and it, it gets more and more difficult as the technology gets more and more sophisticated. And so what we have to do is insist that we have good oversight and that we have good um, measures, uh, real-time measures of, of uh, the depths of the market. As I said, you know, um, dark pools, uh, high frequency trading, uh, all are controversial. I mean, you know, NASDAQ's position, for example, is that there's a distinction between high frequency trading, uh, provided that it's a fair and equal playing field amongst the bigger players. Um, has to be fair and equal. In other words, nobody should have the ability to jump ahead of somebody on the line. If that, if you can get a faster execution because you have information and then you can beat, I can beat you to the trigger in an unfair way. Now, if you don't want to invest in the technology, that's your problem. But if you have the ability to be equal, it has to be fair and equal. Dark poles are a different issue. You know, our view of dark poles are slightly different, which is they were created for one reason and then they operate in a different way. They were created to ensure that you had anonymity. Now, transparency is the holy grail. But in some cases, if you have large institutions either buying or selling, that kind of transparency can skew the market. So there have to be ways of protecting um, certain kinds of trades for certain kinds of institutions. Otherwise, it will adversely affect and be an unfair advantage within the marketplace. So I think you have to have good regulation and, and good oversight. Uh, and the way it's coming about is I think regulators have woken up to the need for it and, and, they're, and they're doing it. I know that uh, if you, they don't get big press, but the Depository Trust uh, had to do a $400 million cash raise to raise its reserves. The Options Clearing Corporation, that, the board that I'm on, uh, we had to increase it in the hundreds of millions um, in terms of uh, reserves. So it, it's something that's being looked at and something that's being addressed. So I think we're coming to an end here. If there are no other questions, Başka soru yoksa artık kapatacağız. Gee, if I knew that I was going to do a solo, ah. I thought we were going to have a long panel and I'd have long pauses. I know, we did a good job. Yeah. Thank you, Sandy. It's been an hour. You kept talking. What? It was fun interviewing you. Thank you. Well, thank you. Evet, teşekkür ediyoruz. <gülüyor>
Değerli konuşmacılarımıza bir kez daha teşekkürlerimizi sunuyoruz ve siz değerli katılımcılarımızı öğle yemeği için salonumuza davet ediyoruz. Buyurunuz.